Hello, hello, and welcome to this top 20 train games video. This is going to consist of 20 games that I believe are pretty good and like the best games that there is. Now, this is more or less going to be on what I personally think, so this isn't like a factual video or anything, this is just, just my general thoughts on all these games that are in this list. So uh, don't get butthurt if a game isn't on your list. This is only really my personal preference. Uh, and everyone is entitled to their own personal preference. So uh, yeah, and if you do have your own different top 20, you can leave that in the comments below, discuss, and etc. So without further ado, let's get started with number 20. Train Station Simulator. Now, Train Station Simulator is a game where you are designing your own train station from the ground up. Uh, and then you have to also add in services between different times, and as well as adding connections via bus, tram, and car parks, taxis, bikeways, the whole lot. It's a pretty good game overall. It's lacking when you get to the end of it, I feel. Uh, once you've pretty much unlock everything and you've done this is really not not much to do number 19 tracks the train set game now tracks will remind you of the little wooden train sets that you would have way back in the day uh it's combined it with modeling as well but not to the realistic extent more of a how you would normally get back in the day when you would have these uh, train sets you can create your own little maps you can drive the trains you've got some uh, s missions in them in the sense of uh, transporting passengers from platforms to different platforms and uh, yeah, overall it's just a really cool cool little game to play if you're really into the whole modeling and making your own train uh, track and layout and whatever number 18 Diesel Rail Car Simulator. Now, Diesel Rail Car Simulator is a small simulator that is based in the 1960s and is purely designed for the British diesel engines in that era. You have two routes of about 150 miles each to drive on. Really, more no, no more than simple than that. You've got realistic physics. It also includes dynamic traffic so when you're running a service and you're running the same service multiple times it may not always be the same that's one of the greatest things i believe about this game the fact that it can vary and it's not just the same scenario or timetable over and over again and they do have a massive timetable and yeah if you're if you're into british railways in the late 1960s and specifically these diesel locomotives uh this is definitely the game for you Number 17, Hypertrain. Now, Hypertrain is a high-speed bullet train simulation survival game. Very, very descriptive. Hypertrain is, is essentially that. Uh, there is... So, the main premise of the game is to transport cargo from different towns in the most unrealistic track you would ever seen uh but it's perfectly acceptable for i believe this game is set in 2070 as ad or whatever it's got building functions so you can make your own little tracks and fix and repair tracks as well as taking damage and fighting off other trains other hostile trains and uh you could have all wacky kind of track building potentials, upgrade your trains, make them longer, have more guns on them, and go at ridiculously high speeds. Number 16. Zompiercer. Or at least that's how I'm going to pronounce that. Zompiercer. Thanks to Google Translate. Zompiercer is a survival game. It's a zombie survival game, but with a twist. The only real base you have is the, your train. You are given a train, 
a locomotive and two carriages. And you build inside of your train. Essentially, you build your your bed, your workbenches, and everything. All of your equipment is inside your train. You need to combat all these different zombies, as well as keeping uh, fuel in your train and keeping moving, and obviously surviving as well. It's a it's a unique t- uh, twist to the zombie apocalypse style game that we have all seen time after time. And it's uh, quite, quite unique. Number 15. The final station. The final station is a zombie apocalypse game, but in 2D this time. The aim of the game is to travel by train to different stations, whether it would be inhabited or not inhabited, abandoned. Look for supplies, look for survivors, as well as making it from station to station without losing ventilation, losing power, making sure that your passengers are all all healthy and fed with food, and just surviving overall. Number 14. Train Fever and Vortex Tycoon. Now, Train Fever and Vortex Tycoon, I'm putting in the same category, in the, in the same spot, because they're practically identical, just different art styles and slightly different me- mechanics to their games. An example would be Train Fever with passengers. If you were to stick just a single station in a town... You don't. It, there is. There's no catchment range. There's no limit to how far people are willing to walk to get to that station. Whereas uh, in Vortex Tycoon, you don't actually carry passengers. At least, at, at least at the moment, there is a passenger train station, but there isn't anything to do with it. And it both fo- mo- most mostly focuses on uh, cargo and factory building. That's something that Train Fever doesn't have. There's a little little in-game mechanic of building some uh, factories building some factories and having uh, iron ore for an example sorry not iron copper uh, produce out no is it iron it is iron sorry don't ignore me iron ore push out iron ingots and then you would sell that off to the stores in the towns have the towns grow have the towns expand they demand for more it's Really, these games are both really good in their own ways. Number 13. Overcrowded. Overcrowded is a game where you are building and designing the most efficient metro station you could possibly make. With certain uh, world layouts, you can't come across some limited terrain to build. And... You need to be making the most efficient, as well as keeping passengers at the station as low as you can. It's a very good game. It's very detailed. It's got a pretty big scale to it in terms of what you need to do to keep your commuters happy, to keep them from uh, glittering and trashing the place, and to keep pushing commuters into into trains and moving along number 12 station flow now station flow is similar to overcrowded but it is different in two distinct ways graphic design it's not the most visually appealing game but it isn't terrible and that's not what brings it down the other thing is that Someone has injected steroids into the mass spawning coding that is in the game to produce thousands upon thousands of passengers and commuters to the point where it's pretty much mandatory to have a sign or something at every millisecond of space that you could potentially have. The aim of the game for Station Flow is to make a ginormous station that is efficient and has all the right signatures and signs to keep your passengers satisfied and happy as well as informing them 
where to go for exits, train stations, as well as uh, setting signs up for uh, escalators, ladders, and everything. And it gets so chaotic when you have a lot of people in your station. Number 11. Mini Metro. Mini Metro is a strategic simulation game about designing a subway for a growing city. Now the growing city consists of shapes. Uh, don't know why, but it bases it off of your traditional subway color map. Uh, you, you most famous, well, most memorable one off of my head would be the London Underground and how they have all their different routes and maps. It's based off of that, and you are to connect all the all the stations up with lines. Now the trick is, is that when the shapes are produced in terms of passengers for each station, a circle cannot be spawned at a circle. A circle will be spawned at anything but a circle station. It needs to get to a circle, a circle station as its the desired destination. So it's not randomly generated passengers that oh, I want to stop off here it's they need to go to a specific station and if you've got three circles in a row a lot of circles can get off of, off of there but a lot of the different shapes are not going to be able to get off because it's not their station and therefore brings a very strategic and very difficult uh, simulation game to the table Number 10, Train Simulator 2020. Now, Train Simulator is a pretty old game. It has been updated its engine throughout the years, and a lot of people are kind of half hazardous on Train Simulator because of its price, which is the main thing. Now, the price can be a bit pricey especially when it comes to DLCs but what brings the silver lining for Dovetail in their train simulator games is that they have constant sales I would strongly believe on average once a month or it's, it seems like it once a month they have a massive sale they've got one currently going on alongside with the steam summer sales at the time that I'm recording this and they have massive sales on some of the routes, which routes by default and no sales are quite expensive. Just wait, just wait for when the sale happens because they can do some pretty decent deals like they do all the time, which really what gives this game a really high rep in my opinion. It's realistic simulation, it's been game since 2009 it's always been updating and improving and I think if you're looking for a good simulation game that you can run easily Train Simulator 2020 is definitely a game for you. Number 9 World of Subs Volume 3 London Underground now the London Underground Simulator as I tend to call it instead of World of Subways is the realistic subway simulation that I know of. It brings the London Underground to life. It's filled with very busy services. A lot of people, if you turn up the uh, settings to maximum people, you will need a beast of a computer to make sure that it doesn't completely crash. But it's really detailed in the sense of you've got everything in the cab is essentially interactable with the lights you got to set up the automatic announcement system and you got to do it correctly like I don't and it's just a complete full detail of what it is to work on the London Underground number eight Mashinki is how I'm going to pronounce that apologies if uh, it's not the correct pronunciation of that name but Mashinki is a 
transport tycoon s kind of game it mainly focuses on trains just like vortex but the, this one's different in the sense that it has a unique style of gameplay so there are seven different money currencies in the game seven not just the one usual money currency or whatever it's always been constantly updating as well and it goes through a bunch of errors as well. So it goes through steam error, diesel error. The most recent one, I believe, is the electric uh, locomotive error. And the goal is to make a transport empire, a transport company, to supply towns their products. And it takes a unique style from one of the older, like, transport tycoon style games in the way that it's uh, grid-based and how the terrain tools work and... I believe it's, there's only one developer for this game. There's a couple of art credits in the credits and a scripter, but there's, a, there's only one script editor. There's only one script credit in there. So realistically, this game only has one developer and one publisher, and this is how it looks. This is how the game is with one developer working on it. This is an exceptional game for this level. Number seven. Squake. Now, I'm not 100% not sure that that's how you pronounce that name, but I'm going to for this. Now, Squake was a game released back in 2017, and it pretty much combined Snake and Trains. And that was the main concept. There was a couple modes in, in there, but... Essentially, it was just another .io game, or Sudoro.io, but in this term, it's got trains. It was a very fun, casual train game that I really enjoyed, and but has since no, lo no longer has its servers running, which is quite sad and quite unfortunate. Don't know why, but yeah, but since this, this game is not available on steam anymore it has been removed we don't know I, I don't know why I haven't done much research into it uh, but you cannot play it at all even if you, even if you have the game you can't play like a local mode which is kind of sad uh, I wish that there was still a thing just to play local because it was a very fun casual game to come back to every now and then and I'm quite disappointed with, with, with myself for not playing enough of it number six Railway Empire. Railway Empire is another train tycoon game that only has trains. You can only get trains in this. There's no trucks or vehicles like the, all the other ones. And this is about building up your empire to expand to all different towns all across America. Uh, you've got certain uh, certain sections with the campaign. You go into certain areas of America but it's all American based over 40 different train models in extraordinary detail I'm just reading off of the bio um, <laughs> it is a really good game and has really good detail as long as as well as buying industries so you can also do that you gotta also put your competitor out of business you've got like a share market in some cases and the more you expand the more of the share market you get until you can completely buy off your opponent in some of the game modes. Other game modes, you can just casually play along. The research tree is also quite long. you got to go through all the little bits and bobs, uh, upgrading your rail line to the best it can be, alongside also sabotaging your opponents as well when you have... have Sabotaging their stations, sabotaging their trains, robbing them. Number five. Bounty Train. Bounty Train is a game where you are traveling across America in your train, supplying towns with goods, transporting people, and fighting off bandits whenever need necessary. Uh, the game starts off with a storyline of uh, 
you owning some sort of percentage in rail shares for the railway. You can hire personnel to help you along your journey, as well as upgrading your engine and buying new carriages to put onto your car train. Occasionally, you will get bandits that will try and rob you, and this is where hiring gunsmen and personnel will help you in this case. It's it's a really strategic and fun, interesting train game. Number four, Rolling Line. Rolling Line is the best model railway, railway game I think I've seen. It brings model railroading to VR as well as non-VR. You could either play around with whatever the map's there or you could go into the game and make custom modelled railroads as you would in real life. The detail is so good and so fantastic that you can really get some really good detail into this game. Alongside, you could also jump into first person and drive the trains from the cab. And having this in VR makes it so much better. The detail is just it's just out of the world and it really does make you feel like a kid in some cases. Just playing with your toy trains. And the amount of detail that has been put into this game and the amount of detail you can put in to making your own custom model railroads is exceptional. Number three. Unrailed. Unrailed is a co-op multiplayer game where you, as a team, have to work together to mine iron, wood, create tracks, the train that you're trying to provide tracks for does not crash and fall off the rails. It is, it is extremely fun trying to work together as a team, building bridges, not getting in each other's way and just the overall cooperation needed makes this game so much fun fuck okay it's fine we'll try. chris it's fine no why'd you take the tracks now i can't grab them <laughs> i don't know have <laughs> it <laughs> fucking idiots <laughs> try that Hey, I'm trapped on the other side where I can't put anything down! Let me just take the fucking things they need! <laughs> they should add a throbbing mechanism into this. Maybe you just need to not be a fucking idiot. I mean, that too, but like, still, adding a throbbing <laughs> mechanism could be useful yeah, too. Yeah, boy, dipshit. And, the, sh and the, sh the stress that goes through when your train is about to derail or catch on fire or anything is just it's just out, out of this world there's countless upon countless scenarios that you can do and it, it, it just really is overall just a really fun game they've added single player recently as well so you can try this game single player you get like a robot that helps you mine and stuff that really does help number two Train Sim World 2020. Train Sim World is, in my opinion, the most realistic train simulator out there. It improved everything from Train Simulator 2020, which is another game from Dovetail, and has made this into a very beautiful, realistic simulator that has so many functions and features as well as a 24-7 timetable for you to choose and pick routes through that way if you don't want to do scenarios. Pretty much almost all buttons, toggles is activated. You're setting up your train as you would realistically. 
it's just overall just a really fantastic experience to be driving in this game number one will be announced after two more subsections for awards so it's something like that we've got the honorable mentions and games to look out for let's start off with the honorable mentions honorable mention number one Transport Fever 1 and Transport Fever 2. Now both these games, Transport Fever, the series as a whole, is exceptional. It is a really, really good series and it's a really good game since coming through to Transport Fever 2. The way that the, the, the track working, the track lane works, is phenomenal. The way that trains and signaling works and how they are animated and produced it is just overall good but the game doesn't focus on trains it focuses on being a transport company and using all different kinds of uh, trucks vehicles planes boats and etc to progress in the game doesn't mean it's it's a bad game it's more strategic and it has become a very fantastic series from the ground up when starting with Train Fever. Honourable mention number two. Beware of Trains. Beware of Trains is a game where it is des- you are designed to create chaos, and absolute chaos, by killing people. You've got certain op- goals and objectives for each level. And you've got certain utilities such as derailers, speeders, glue, uh, explosive barrels, and a whole bunch more. And the goal is to cause as much chaos as possible while also having a little bit of a challenge and limiting you to some items. It is a really fun casual game that is quite enjoyable and if you love creating chaos, this is definitely a good game for you. Now that the, all the honourable mentions are out of the way, it's time to move on to the games to look out for. Now the games to look out for section is games that I found that aren't released yet, uh, but ga- games that I found while going through Steam and looking at all the train games that are av- available right now, and ones that I have as well. Uh, and these are the couple that I found that look quite interesting when they come out. Games to look out for number one. Train Sim World 2. Now, Train Sim World 2 is the sequel to Train Sim World. Now, when this first got released, it was a bit on edge because why wouldn't, why would you release a second game and you got the first one? And I believe it's to do something with the different engine styles and the different coding that has been changed because there's apparently a new physics engine involved. And just so much has changed that they can't put that into Train Sim World. And the benefits of Train Sim World 2 is that they have built this engine to support steam trains and multiplayer in the very near future alongside uh, a livery cr- creator, which is something that they've added, and scenario and route making involved in this newly reformed game as well as improvement with graphics Uh, i believe they also put that and longer hauls longer freight hauls that train sim world couldn't handle apparently but this is going to be very a very interesting game when it comes out and it looks spectacular games to look out for number two Void Train. Void Train is a game where you are a crew member of an interdimensional express train where you are discovering new inhabited worlds, amazing creatures and dangers. You can upgrade your train. It looks very, very interesting with all the mobs, mobs? For the creatures that come that come around to these new worlds and it is a co-op online multiplayer for up to four people and it looks like it's a very 
very interesting game when it comes out. And last but not least, the one we've all been waiting for, number one. Derail Valley. Derail Valley is by far the best game ever. The best game so far right now. Derail Valley is a game where you are running your own career in an open world railway network. It is a remote island by the looks of it. You've got your own train, you've got careers, you've got to pretty much transport goods to one town to another, but it's not always as simple as you think. It's a little difficult in some places with hills and turns and all kinds of stuff, and it is built for VR, but can be played with, with non-VR. It is a fantastic game, and since the overhaul up, up, uh, update, it has gotten even more traction and the introduction of a uh, DB6, a diesel locomotive, to make jobs so much more easier and so much more fun. Pretty much every single control is, is completely intera interactable. You can use anything. You have to start the engines on your own. And it just overall is a fantastic game. And I truly, truly believe that d Valley is the best train game right now. So that was my top 20 list of train games. Now, again, this is more of a personal preference as to what I feel. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see what other people could come up with in terms of their top 20. There's probably so many more other games out there as well that I might have missed, so I do apologize for that. But these are really the games that I have played, and I can really get a good... Um, judgment compared to the games that I haven't played and just give them a give them a throw in in here so I didn't want to just like half-ass it so but yeah anyway I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this video I hope I've enlightened you with some other games or something I don't know this isn't going anywhere so I'm just gonna leave it here goodbye bye